I want to show my appreciation to all the leaders who are here. Leaders from the church worldwide. Leaders from a Muslim community. I respect and salute your courage to be with us, impact us, and also receive impartation from us. Leaders from the government who are here, leaders from every section of society, our royal fathers, I also salute your participation that you are here with us. We're not going to take too much of your time already. We've had real ministration from everyone, our choirs, choirs from the globe, our leaders everywhere. I now come to part something unto you. I come to announce to you, you are a conqueror. And you will conquer. You know, if we have to move forward and be change makers, we have to conquer every obstacle before us and thank God you will conquer, I will conquer, and we shall conquer in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you because you created us at such a time like this, you made us to be citizens of our country. And all who are listening everywhere, you made everyone citizens in their country. We are not here by accident. They are not there by accident. You have a plan. You have a purpose. And you have the power to see us through, to achieve what you have made, created, and fashioned us to be. Lord, I pray everyone here will have the impartation of the anointing and the unction to be, to be overcomers everywhere we find ourselves in Jesus' name. Yes. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. River State can give a better amen. God bless you. You can sit down. As I said, I'm talking to you very briefly on conquering your mountain through the change maker. In Romans chapter 8, verse 37, it says, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. When you start a sentence generally, you do not start with nay, no. You know, somebody wants to write a book and he writes the first chapter and the first paragraph and the first word, nay. We don't do that. Something had been said before. We have a plan, we have a goal, we're reaching for the top, we're reaching for the mountain. And then somebody presents to us, how about this, how about this, how about that? Do you think you can overcome and be where you ought to be with all these challenges? Is then we say, nay, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. And I want to say, well, the mountains before us, well, the mountains even within us, well, the mountains ahead of us, we say nay. We say no to every argument. We say no to everything that tries to beat us back and tries to tell us we cannot make it. I say no to Satan. How about you? I say no to sickness. 
I say no to every stumbling block before me, before you. Nay, in all these things, above all these things, beyond all these things, despite all these things, we are more than conquerors through him. Who is a him? That's our God. That's our Savior. That is the change maker. Through him, we will conquer. You will conquer in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 20. In Matthew 17, verse 20. And Jesus said unto them. Now, they had asked a question before Jesus said unto them because now you know he's starting the sentence with because you cannot start a sentence with because something had gone before something had been said before they demanded why why couldn't we do it understand the context i know the context but i want to bring your mind to this christ had done it they could not do it and so they said what's the difference why have you been able to do it and we could not do it and then he said because how is it we see the change in the west they have not always been like that and the things that happen in the West, and we try here, and we're failed. And we're asking, why have we not been able to do that? That's a question we need to ask. I, I need to tell you that the people of the West who have achieved, who have done what they have done, they didn't get there just one week and they have not always been like that to give you an example laughable example in the past i'm talking about some hundreds of years ago when somebody had blood pressure you know what they tried to do they thought blood pressure and it kills and so what are we going to do? The, somebody brought out an idea and they'll try to draw blood out of their body in the past. They thought the blood was too much. That's why it's having blood pressure. And so if we drain out part of the blood, then the rest will cool down and circulate very well. No, it didn't solve the problem until they said we must make a change. This is not working. Drawing out the blood does not kill blood pressure. And so they went on and went on. And now they can monitor the blood pressure. You can even monitor it in your house. And they know what to do. Your responsibilities, a change. That's what we're talking about. In the past, when it's a mountain, the people in that land, they will try to make a road and launch the mountain. And it gave such problem. A change came now. The engineers, they tunnel through the mountain. The mountain is not their problem anymore. The point is, we'll be with these mountains for a long time. We'll be with these challenges for a long time. Now some people got up and they said, we can tunnel through the mountain. We can fly over the mountain. They now made an advantage of their disadvantage and we're asking why are they doing that over there you know sometimes there's a sea very deep there's a sea very wide and to build the bridge that is even something over that ocean that's great but we now have over there in the west we have the tunnel 
that goes under the sea. And then they drive. And all the facilities are there. All the signs are there. We're asking why. How is it? They have done it. And we could not. The disciples asked the Lord. And said, why are we not able to do it? And now he says, because of your unbelief. Unbelief says, impossible. I can never do that. I can never achieve that. And then we we'll pass it on to the others. He cannot do that. He's my neighbor. He cannot do that. He's my tribesman. He cannot do that. If I cannot, if he cannot, we can not. From today, we can. Say good amen. Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, that if ye had faith like a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence and, be, and go yonder to yonder place, and it shall be removed. You lost a good amen. amen. We've come to the point now when I see every mountain in front of you removed. Amen. Every mountain confronting your family removed. Amen. Every mountain confronting your health totally removed. And the change agent you want to be, the mountain of poverty. The mountain of impossibility. The mountain of uneducated. Uh, I'm not well educated. And the problem of unemployment. All those mountains. I want you to look at me so I can, get, I can catch your eyeballs. All those mountains removed from your life in Jesus name. There are three things. Uh, and then it says. And uh, nothing shall be impossible unto you. Amen for me. Amen. Nothing shall be impossible for me. Nothing shall be impossible for me. Amen. Amen. Heaven affirms your confession. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, we're looking at moving away the mountain by faith. Moving away the mountain by faith. Number two, making advantage of mountains without fear. Once a mountain confronts a person, the first thing is fear. The first thing is fidgeting. The first thing is begin. There's a self-talk on the inside. I would have gone there, but you know now I cannot. I would have done that, but now you know I cannot. I would have achieved that. You know now I cannot. Why? But look at the mountain now. So visible, so high, so broad, so deep. And it's been there for a long time. It was there at the time of our great, great grandfather. At the time of our grandfather and my own time now. And I guess I'm going to pass this on to the, common, to the coming generation. And because of that mountain, we think we cannot. We're going to take advantage of every adversity in our lives. Advantage of every disadvantage in our lives. You know, sometimes the disadvantage is I am black. And because I'm black, I see that as a mountain. The color of my skin is a limitation to where I can get to. We're going to cancel that. Yeah. And then sometimes, because, permit me other countries to talk to our people, because I carry the green passport. And that is Nigerian passport. And anywhere I go, once they see that green uh, passport, Limitation comes. We're going to break that barrier. Yeah. Number three is mountain above your mountains by flight. One, 
move it away. Two, make an advantage of it. Number three, move, mount above your mountains by flight. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at moving away the mountain by faith. Jesus said in verse 20, if you have a grain of mustard seed as faith, you will say, what do you say? Mountain, move away. The change begins with a language. The change begins with a proclamation. The change begins with our saying, mountain, you will move. In the past, we used to say, mountain, you are there. I move away. I move away from my goal. I move away from my decision. I move away from all the vision I had. Why? The mountain is there. Now, a change maker will change its language. Instead of saying, I move. What will move today? I said what will move today? First, by the change of your language. And then, by the change of your heart. You have the heart of faith. You believe there's a God in heaven that wants you to go beyond the mountain. And because he wants you to go beyond the mountain, you have that faith in that God that will move the mountain before you. And you say to this mountain, be thou removed. Now, when I'm talking of mountain, young people, you might think I'm talking about, you know, a mountain is there where now uh, Kilimanjaro, Mount Everest, and then uh, the preacher said, go there, move that mountain. No, that mountain in Kilimanjaro does not disturb you. It's not a problem to you. you. You don't have to go there. That's a waste of time. Mount Everest, that doesn't, doesn't disturb you. That doesn't come your way. And you can travel up and down your country without confronting uh, that other mountain. Is the mountain before you. Let me explain. When Moses came and he said, a change is happening. These slaves, as a nation, they're going to become the superior nation above where they had been slaves. A mountain was before him that was Pharaoh. But he overcame that mountain. What am I talking about? I'm talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The mountain before them was not Mount Everest, and it was not even sickness. It was a Nebuchadnezzar. They had a conviction. Here is the way we're going to worship. We're going to have the freedom of worship. Even in Babylon, there was a mountain before them. And that mountain was Nebuchadnezzar. And he said, don't waste your life. You cannot do that here. Here is Babylon. And I am the leader of Babylon. If you don't bench, if you don't bow, you will burn. That was the mountain before them. They overcame, you will overcome. Here comes Jesus. He came and he wanted the good news to come all over the world. And the mountain there was not Mount Kilimanjaro, was not Mount Everest. It was the Pharisee, the Sadducee. And he said, you will not do that here. You will not change anything here. And he was here to change the world. And he said, he could not even change the locality where he was. The Pharisees, they were the mountain at that time. Here comes Paul. And Paul comes and he begins to announce there's only one way. And there's a Jesus, the Lord, and the Savior. The mountain was not Mount Everest. It was, you know, the rigid, traditional people that said, we'll catch him, we'll get him, we'll destroy him. And he pulled through. You will pull through. What's the mountain before you? Mountain of ideology. 
mountain of tradition, mountain of impossibility. And here you come as a change maker. And you say, that thing over there, it will be changed. That thing over there, it will be changed. And the people call you and they warn you. They say, we've been on this road for centuries, for millennia. And you come, little girl, uh, not, not minding your age, you are 70. Those people there, they see you as little girl. They know your family. They know when you were born. And they know, you know, the limitation that how old will be before you. And you say, little girl, what are you trying to do? All those mountains will move away from you in Jesus' name. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, Jesus said, how be it? This kind goeth not out, but by prayer. Tell me. Tell me out aloud. And fasting. Now, fasting normally is doing without food for a, for a period of time. And Jesus said, this kind will not go out. This kind of demon, this kind of disease, this kind of difficulty, this kind of demarcation, this kind of mountain, this kind of impossibility, this kind of challenge will not go out except by prayer and fasting. We know prayer. That means to talk to God. That means to say, God, here is my challenge. You are the God of all power, the God of all creation, and you can remove my mountain, my difficulty. But it says prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Can I break it down for you? F, face, without food. You deny yourself of food for some time. Why? The moving of this mountain is more important for me than all the bites of whatever food. And so I come. And why am I fasting? Because I believe that a change will come. You're not going to waste your time, waste your life. If you don't have faith, already he said, you must have the grain of mustard seed as faith. And you come with that, with that faith for a period without food. A, abstinence. Abstinence means that you withdraw yourself from, you know, the smell, the look, and the remember taste of the food. You say no. Why? Because I'm looking for something greater than the food, than all the pleasures, everything I could have. Therefore, I come with prayer and fasting. The S there is submission. When I'm fasting, when you are fasting, we still have to say, thy will be done. We cannot go to God and say, God, hurry up, get up, remove this mountain. If it be thy will, if the mountain is there to serve a purpose, if the mountain is there to strengthen me, if the mountain is there to strengthen my backbone, if the mountain is there so that I will know I have a God greater than a mountain, God I submit. There are people who say they are praying and they are fasting. And they don't put the will of God, the mind of God, the appointment of God into consideration. But the people who actually pray and fast in the right way, they are the people that say, yes, I fast with faith without food. I fast with abstinence. And abstinence is no more now just about food. The abstinence is for 
every other thing. You know what? I, I want to get that. I want pleasure. I want to get that. I want what pleases me. We abstain from all that at that time for a period. And we're in submission to the total will of God because he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. The way you are thinking about the mountain is not the way I'm thinking about the mountain. Get my will. Get my thoughts. Get my understanding. Get my purpose. And know why what is happening is happening. What prayer and Fasting, tea is temperance, your self control. You know, people, there are people, when they are hungry, they are angry. There are people, when they have a delayed satisfaction, they are angry. They say, an angry man is an angry man. But no, your temper is under control. You are temperate, your self-control. You are the only one that knows that I am fasting, that you are fasting because of that. Nobody sends you on the errand to fast. You're not taking it on everybody. This person does, you are touchy. This person uh, does that, you're temperamental. No, if you are fasting, a real fast will affect your temper, will affect temperance, and then I, your fast, without iniquity. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And so, if you are fasting, and you are smoking, you are fasting, you are getting drunk, you are fasting, you are beating your wife, you are fasting, and you are weak, and you are practicing wickedness, that fasting will not work. It must be without any kind of iniquity. And when you fast and pray, remember, he said, whatsoever you ask in my name, in my name, you don't go before the Lord and say, God, wake up, leave all, the, all your administration of the world, pay attention to me. And this is my name, and then you give your name. That name will not get anything. It is as you come, and as you say, I come, I pray, I fast, I devote myself. I'm pleading for this in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Gee, there, you fast for his glory. Your fast for glory. Anything I demand, O oh Lord, which will not be to your glory, console that, that just a me foolish man thinking I must have this. And if you know it will not bring glory to you, Lord, remove that from the least of what I'm asking for. And it's those people that come apart and they stand apart and they stay apart and they say, Lord, I want this. I want it so much, more than food. So I have faith without food. I want it so much, I'm willing to abstain from everything that will not move me forward. Abstainers, I come in submission, in submission to the Lord. I come with temperance, self-control. I come without, in, without um, iniquity. And I come in the name of your only begotten Son. And I come with godliness for glory. That is how we we'll pray and fast. And as an assurance, if you fast in the right way, and you ask in the right way, you are going to have that request. Amen. The mountain will move before you in Jesus' name. That's number one. Moving away the mountain. Tell me by. Tell me out aloud. We have enough faith in the house here this morning that can move your mountain away from you in Jesus' name. We're looking at number two here. Number two, we're looking at making advantage of mountains without fear. Making an advantage of the mountain. P. 
people because of Matthew chapter 17. They concentrate on that and they say, mountain move, mountain move. And they think that's the only way we deal with mountains. What I've done is, I've done it before, but I'm doing it again. I've checked up mountains from the Old Testament. Mountain from the New Testament. Mountains everywhere. And I found out that we can, instead of mourning, mourning, and instead of moping around the mountains, looking at the mountain and going around, <laughs> you know, I'm so unfortunate in life. I was born in this family, and the family has all this catalog of mountains and difficulties and challenges. And then I'm mourning, I'm mourning, and I'm moping, and I'm, you know, going around, going around. Where will this stop? When will this stop in life? Now, I've discovered now, I don't have to mourn or moon or move. I can make an advantage of every mountain in life. And you can. And you will. Yeah. You know, you have to change your mindset. Because I know your mindset, like my mindset in the past, is that the only thing I do with mountain is I command, move. It has not moved. Move, it has no move. I say move, it's still there. And I keep on on that same path all the time. But now, we have changed mind. Are you there? We have changed mind. In fact, now, mountain, stay there. I'll show you something. You will see, I'm going to make progress instead of you mountain standing there. You will see, I'm going to get beyond all that mountain, the position of that mountain, the pressure of that mountain, because I'm going to make an advantage of this mountain. You will in Jesus' name. What had hindered us is Fear. Once I see that thing, fear. I hear that somebody died of cancer, and I examined how they felt, what they saw, and how it happened, and how it graduated to stage four. And now, if I feel the same thing I've heard, that's a mountain. Fear comes in. And that fear paralyzes you, paralyzes your brain, your mind, paralyzes your sight. You cannot even look for an alternative. I hear of somebody that was cursed by whoever. And now you have the same experience and somebody like that other person placed a curse on you and on your family. And what sets scene is not, how can I overcome that? What did I do for this man or woman to curse me? And I don't remember, a curse causeless shall not come to you. A curse causeless, tell me out aloud, shall not come. And you know, what gives curse? Power is faith. What gives the promise of God power is faith. Look at all the promises the Lord has given me. If I have not manifested faith and bring into activation all those promises, then somebody gives a curse. And I, the faith I should put in the promises of God, I put that faith in the curse. It's a faith that activates any possibility of that curse. I don't believe any curse upon you will work. It will not work. Look at Jesus. Look at the man putting a curse. And Jesus said, My Father God bless you. 
And the cursed man said, His master Satan trouble you. You've had both. Which one do you believe? Is the one you believe that will work for you. Amen and amen. amen. And so we understand whatever mountain may be there, we are overcomers. I am an overcomer. Uh, look at Zechariah chapter 4, and I'm reading here from verse 6. Zechariah chapter 4, and we're looking at verse 6. It says, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Give me an amen before I explain. Amen. Satan and the Holy Spirit, which one is greater? The man, puny man, not even as tall as you are, wicked man, but really doesn't have any authority over you. That man with his curse, with his mountain, with his wall of demarcation before you. That man and the Holy Spirit who is greater. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit he will fight for you. <laughs> when we were young, I was in the primary school then. You know, this bully comes and he threatens me. It's about to fight and put my back on the wall. I look here, I look there, and I saw my elder. He is heftier, he is greater. And then as I look at him, he beckoned to me. So I told the other fellow, who is the Buddha? I said, okay, come. And as he came, I withdrew and allowed my senior brother to deal with him. <laughs> now, the Holy Ghost will deal with them. Yeah. Your sickness, the Holy Ghost will deal with that sickness. Yeah. And all your poverty and everything, and all the things that threaten your life, Holy Ghost has come. Yeah. Blow everything out of your life. Make sure that the Holy Ghost is always present. It says in verse 7. It says in verse 7. And then he answered. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel. Before, mention your name there. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before, mention your name. It says, thou shalt become a plain. The Lord will get rid of them. Yeah. He shall bring forth the headstone. Thereof with shouting, crying, grace, grace to it. If the grace of God is in your life, those mountains are gone. Yeah. And whatever you have feared until this time, all that mountain will melt away from your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. I'm coming to number three here. Number three is mountain above your mountains by flight. What does that mean? Just look back a few decades ago that when our great-great-grandfathers wanted to travel, they were limited by the wide ocean. They couldn't cross over. And so they were limited to their localities where they were. And then... Some people making change. 
They made the change that over that river, over that ocean, they now built bridges. And for the first time, our forefathers could move out of their local area because that sea, the sea was still there. The ocean was still there. But some change makers had come and stretched a bridge over that. And then, just about um, a few years, more than a century now, I think about 1903 or thereabout, that the Bright Brothers came and aeroplane came. So that with the aeroplanes now, you want to travel from here to there. And a lot of mountains are on the way. You fly over your mountain. Amen. You see, the problem with us is, while the aeroplane is there, because we have been used to thinking of the mountain, the mountain, the mountain, we can take a flight and come go over our mountain. And whatever philosophical mountain and whatever mountain of sickness or disease or whatever now you can fly over yeah. I said now you can fly over yeah. if you think of the things that killed people just about 50 60 70 years ago even the West that came here to colonize us, this one died of malaria. This one died of pollution. That one died of this. All those ones now, we have overcome the mountain of mosquitoes. You need to understand that one. If you understand, say amen. If malaria kills anybody now, this, uh, how can malaria kill this fellow? He didn't look at all the things available. We can fly over those mountains of mosquitoes. The things that used to get us down. And the things that used to stop us. And we cannot move away from that. All those things now will fly over them. I'll fly over them. Number three, moving mountain above your mountains by flight. Look at Isaiah chapter 40. And I'm reading from verse 28. Isaiah 40, verse 28. Here it says, As thou not known, that's the problem. We know, but we don't apply. We know, we don't consider, we know, we don't personalize. As thou not known, as thou not heard that the everlasting Father, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainteth not, neither is he weary. There is no such in of his understanding. He understands all the mountains that may stand before you. And he knows how to move them. He'll move them away from your life. Verse 29. In verse 29. He giveth power to the faint. He giveth power to the faint. Amen. Yeah. You know, some people say, I read I read, I read the Bible. I say, very good. How many chapters did you read today? I'm still going to read more, but I read 10 chapters. I understand, but how many of the verses in those chapters sank into you? Tell me one that you're standing on, you're working on, you're planning on making personal. He says, Pastor, I don't remember anyone. You see, it's not how many chapters you read. It's what you do with the few that will get you away from where you are and then to mount up. It says, he giveth power to the faint. You've been fainting. 
for one year, for two years, discouraged, almost passing out. And you're reading and reading and reading the Bible. You didn't come across this one. He giveth power to the faith. Now you have come to the final bus stop. He gives you power. You will not faint anymore. And then he says to them that have no might, he increases strength. That's what you need to hold onto and to say, I know he is a God that will give me the power, the strength, the vision above all my mountains. Look at verse 30. It says in verse 30, even the youths shall faint. Even the youths shall faint. Uh, we think the natural power of the youths will do more for them than the spiritual power from the ancient of days. And because now I've crossed the line of 40 or 45, because now you become 50 years of age, and you look at the young people with natural strength, natural power, then you say, I wish I were young again. I wish I could be 20 again. Now, even at 55, 57, 61, if you have the energy from above, the power from above, the unction from above, you'll be stronger than the people, the young people that have natural strength. Because even the youth shall faint and be weary and... The young men shall utterly fall. But, verse 31, verse 31, I bring you up to this, and I want you to understand, they that wait upon the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord, what does that mean? Well, you understand, you are standing at the bus stop, the bus has not come, you're not worried and anxious, you wait there. You know that boss will come. My boss that will take me out of this place and take me to the desired destination is coming. I said it's coming. I look right. I don't see any signal. I look left. I don't see any signal. I don't get away from there. I wait. My boss is coming. The carrier is coming. Why don't you do that with the Lord as a mountain? You cannot move that mountain. But you know, the God of heaven and earth, he has promised you, he'll give power to those who faint. And you are waiting there. You look to the right, you look to the left, you look everywhere. You cannot see any sight, but you wait. The change maker is coming. Amen. He'll get to you there. Amen. You just stay there. Just stay there because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Shall renew their strength. Shall renew their strength. Amen. They shall mount up like with wings as eagles. Mount up. Mount up. Mount up. Now, think of an eagle. An eagle wants to pass here and he sees a lot of people, a crowd. And he sees Military people, policemen, everywhere, guarding everywhere. And the eagle looks, and if the eagle tries to come at this level and pass through, he might be dead before he gets to the other side. But the eagle said, no problem. All that crowd, I will pass over. I will pass over. The security people are there, I will pass over. The crowd there, I will pass over. The people who may want to plug my 
and my, my feathers, they are all there, they will not touch me. And that eagle passes over. That's what prayer does. That's what waiting upon the Lord, that's what it does. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. You will run and not be weary. If you're running, why are you running? You have a destination you want to get to in your own strength. In the middle of that race, you're tired, you're weak, you're worn out. As a change maker, you have the destination. This will be done in my lifetime. In the middle of that race, you're weary, you're tired, you're discouraged. You're about giving up, but you wait upon the Lord. And the Lord will renew your strength. And the Lord will empower you. Whatever you dream of, you dream of spiritual things, material things, natural things, and you are getting tired. And you say, can I make it? I answer, you will make it. Because you wait upon the Lord, you renew your strength, then you mount up with wings as eagles, and then you run, you are not weary, and they shall walk, and they shall not faint. They shall walk, and they shall not faint. Now, we have the solution here this morning. Not fainting. Not passing out. Not giving up. Running and walking until we get to the end of the race. But how many of you remember? You went to the doctor and he gave you the pills. Use this in the morning. Use this in the afternoon. And use this in the evening. And within this period of time, everything will clear out. How many of you have the experience? So you see it for the first day. Second day, the third day, you abandon it. Fourth day, you abandon it. And one week, you abandon it. And eventually, you get back to where you were. You call the doctor again. Doctor, doctor, I have this condition now. And the doctor is asking, did you use that thing I gave you the way I told you? I'm sorry, doctor, I did not. All that you have heard today, what to do with your mountain? By faith, without fear, by flight, you will go, you will apply each in Jesus' name. Amen. Let everybody say, Amen. Amen. Let's rise up for the big time we have. Call upon the Lord. Talk to the Lord. He is able, able, able to move that mountain as you believe. Whatever mountain, whatever challenge stands before you, with faith, you move that mountain. Or you take advantage, make an advantage of that mountain without fear. Or you mount above, fly above that mountain. The Lord will give you the strength, the power, the know-how. Mountains will not stop you anymore. Amen. Raise up your hand. Father, in Jesus' name, Amen. by faith, I command every mountain before your people 
move away in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for everyone who had been kind of having set back, totally down, because of mountains of challenges and difficulties. Give them the wisdom, the insight to plow through, tunnel through all those mountains and go beyond in Jesus' name. And for those who have been here and there, going in a skelter, and the mountain still had been there, I pray the mountain power, the running strength, that they will not be weary, they will not fall, but you give them the power to fly over their mountains, Give them in Jesus' name. Every challenge, every sickness, every impossibility, by faith, I say, move away. Move away. Move away. Every limitation in our lives, move away in Jesus' name. Lord, nothing will stop this mighty army moving on to the desired destination in Jesus' name. Every day you have the provision. Every day you possess the power. Every day that energy of the spirit that moves us on Moves us on, moves us on, be present, prominent, preeminent in your life in Jesus' name. We well, thank you, Lord. It is done. In whose life? It is done. In whose house? It is done. Go. And mount beyond every mountain in your life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray.